This video is sponsored by Squarespace. You can make your own beautiful website or online store with this all-in-one platform. Hi everyone, so this video we're going to talk about sketchbooks and ways to improve your sketchbook, but you don't really need to improve a sketchbook, it can be the messiest place ever. These are just some ideas that you can apply to your sketchbook if you want to. People seem to always have a lot of goals for their sketchbooks, so maybe this can help you reach your sketchbook goals. But basically, sketchbooks don't have to look nice or cohesive, but if you do want to take your sketchbook to the next level without doing like full fancy illustrations, this video is for you because I think you can definitely like make your sketchbook look more pretty, I guess, without having to like spend hours on each page. And it can be kind of motivating to have a nice looking sketchbook and it will make you want to use it more. I find a good way to sort of improve your sketchbook, so to speak, is to make your pages feel fuller because a good sketchbook is a sketchbook that's been used to the fullest. And a good way to do this is when you decide you wanna sketch for the day, a good way to warm up is to go back to previous pages and add to them here and there. I find it's a good way to fill up your sketchbook and a good way to warm up for the day as a sort of low pressure activity. Cause also starting from scratch on a blank page can be a little bit intimidating as the first sketch that you do of the day. And going back and filling in blank areas here and there can be a great way to just make your sketchbook feel fuller and you'll notice it when you flip through it. And especially if you're using media that wasn't on that page, it can kind of give it more of a variety. Because if you just did a bunch of pencil sketches on one page and there was a bunch of blank areas, and when you open your sketchbook for another session and you're flipping back to look for places to fill up and you have uh, like say pencil crayons with you, it'll be a good way to like add different media onto that page. And then it kind of gives it like a collage feel with a bunch of different media. My second tip for your sketchbook is to use mixed media. Don't be afraid to use all sorts of different media and use whatever sparks joy in that particular moment most of all. So whatever you're going to enjoy drawing with the most is what you should probably use for that day. So say there's a new pen that you really like that you just bought or it's like some random pen that you see laying around and you're like, I wonder what it'd be like to sketch with this. Just grab it and sketch with it, fill a page. Sometimes like you enjoying yourself and like having fun with the materials that you're using can come through in your art and it'll end up making your sketches look even better. And you can just tell that like whoever drew that was having a good time with it. So try to think if there's anything in particular that you just really like using. You like the way it lays down on the page, you like the color of it, you like the texture, you just wanna challenge yourself and use something weird in your sketchbook to do some uh, sketching. So sometimes when I'm traveling or like going to someone's house or like visiting, home or something and I want to bring my sketchbook. I try to like bring a limited amount of supplies to kind of like challenge myself and see what I can do with what I'm bringing. You can also layer different media on top of each other. I'm a big advocate for uh, mixed media and especially mixed media in your sketchbook. I like to use all sorts of different media like markers and pencil crayon and Caran uh wax pastels and watercolor and paint and just all sorts of stuff in your sketchbook layer it on top of each other and use this as a way to learn how the media interacts. And you can take the things that you've learned with you to final illustrations. It's just a great way to experiment and it's gonna be cool to look through later and see all of your experimentation with media and how you use it. And you just never know what you could discover. That's what the cool thing about sketchbooks are. You never know what could happen when you sit down to draw. You just never know, so try to discover new things and have fun with it. If you're enjoying the media that you're using, you're gonna wanna use it more, and this will be reflected in the sketchbook when you flip through. You're gonna be able to tell that you are having fun. Now for a break to thank this video's sponsor, which is Squarespace. As you probably know, Squarespace is an online platform. You can build your own website or store or blog, and you can completely customize it to suit your own needs. They have so many different templates to choose from, and you can change every aspect of them from the colors and the fonts, the photos, the layout. You can add pages, you can add galleries. I chose a simple template, and then I modified some things to suit my brand a bit better. Their Fluid Engine Editor is very useful because this lets you drag elements around on the page and they will automatically snap to a grid that's already 
already there. So it kind of lets you have freedom, but it also keeps things looking organized. I also like to connect my social media accounts to my website, and this lets people be able to find you everywhere. I think it's really good to cross promote and connect everything together. If this sounds interesting to you, go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash gelarts, and you can get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Another way to improve your sketchbook or to make it look a little bit more like fancy um, is to color the background of sketches. And this might seem like, I don't know, it's a very easy thing to do. It's kind of like a reward for completing a sketch. I like to do this mainly with like pencil drawings or pen drawings. And what I mean by this is you have a you have a completed pencil drawing and you take like a marker or watercolor and you fill in the background of the sketch a solid color. And what this does is it highlights sketches. So if there's ones you want to point out to yourself, you want certain ones to stand out more than others, or you just want to do the whole page, um, that's what you can do. It also helps you carve out the silhouette of the sketch because sometimes like a sketch will have more loose contour lines around the outside and coloring in the background can sort of carve out the shape and you can see like the silhouette of it and see exactly like what it looks like, if that makes sense. I like to do this on things that I haven't colored in, like I said, like pencil drawings or pen drawings, things that don't have color. It's just a nice way to add a splash of color to your page. I think like the more color you use in your sketchbook, the better, um, because it just makes it feel so fun and colorful. But there's definitely a lot of people that have like pencil only sketchbooks and they're like just as beautiful. I think an improvement to your sketchbook is just having fun and using whatever it is that you want to use and what what is the most fun to you that will get you to keep drawing because that's the whole goal with the sketchbook. Another way to improve your sketchbook, don't rip out pages. If you don't like a page, try doing other things to make yourself okay with the page. I think ripping out pages, I don't know, it like takes away the total number of pages. It might make you uh, more likely to rip out pages in the future. And I think it's good to just try to live with your mistakes or cover it up with something else and this can make the page look even cooler. Uh, I think a fun thing to do is to get post-it notes and glue them over parts you don't like and then redraw it. And this like automatically just makes your sketchbook look like kind of more cool. And it might make you go from hating the page to loving the page. I think it's good to try to live with imperfect things because that's a good attitude to have with a sketchbook. Not everything's going to be amazing and it's meant for you to figure stuff out. And if something is really bothering you, then you can paint over it, glue stuff on top of it, try your best to make peace with the page, basically. Um, Cause once you flip the page, you're not gonna see it anymore. And I know when you go through your sketchbook later, you're gonna see it, but I find some pages I've hated and I decided to glue paper on top and redraw parts of it. And they end up being some of my favorite pages. So. Just something to keep in mind, try not to rip out pages because I used to do this when I was younger. I'd get really frustrated and rip out pages, but I think it's good to not do that and to try to work with it because you can always add stuff on top of the page. You can always glue paper on top, paint on top. Um, you can do all sorts of stuff. You can even take like scrapbook materials or like receipts from your favorite stores, glue them in the page, treat it like a journal and try to challenge yourself to to change the page until you're okay enough with it, to leave it and not rip it out. And don't worry about everything being perfect. A messy sketchbook is a good sketchbook in my opinion because it means you allowed yourself to kind of let loose and draw whatever you want and not worry too much about how it looks because this is the place where you generate your ideas, you mess around with media. It's, it's the place where you're able to do those kinds of drawings. And you might even want to have a nice sketchbook and a messy sketchbook, a sketchbook where you do nice stuff and a sketchbook where you do messy stuff. I personally prefer to have it all in one place because some days I might, I might want to do nice things and then I'm like, you know what, I actually can't today, so I'm just going to draw whatever. And some days you want to do messy things, but sometimes the messy things look nicer in your nice pages. And I just like to have it all documented in one place, but that, that is an option for you. I used to have uh, one sketchbook from Ikea that had a really thin paper and I used pencil only in it and I drew the messiest animal drawings. I was trying to learn how to draw animals better. So I just like drew sketches over and over and over of different kinds of animals and it was a really good way to learn and I didn't care at all how it looked. I was really just desperately trying to learn how to draw animals better and it, and it honestly worked. 
So that's something to keep in mind that you might be able to do as well. Another tip for you is to draw a mix of comfort zone drawings and new things. It's good to experiment and try to learn how to draw things, but it's also good to draw what you know as a reward and to simply have fun with art. Like there's nothing wrong with drawing something that you've drawn a hundred times already because maybe you're going to find a new way to draw it this time or it's just a way to get your hands warmed up or it's just a fun way to make art. But it's also good to try to draw new things because you might discover things that you really like to draw that you would have never thought to draw before. Like in this video, I'm drawing some bugs and I don't draw bugs a lot. I, I draw them sometimes, but not a lot. And I saw a few photos of, of artists who make bugs have like really cartoony eyes and I was like, maybe this will make me want to draw more bugs because I think the aesthetic of bugs is like pretty cute because they're just like little things. They're just like little guys that crawl around outside on the ground and they do a lot of stuff for the ecosystem that we might not be aware of necessarily and there's a lot of cute ones and their little antennas are always so cute and I had a lot of fun drawing bugs. So this is your sign to draw bugs if you want. Um, but basically there's there's two kinds of things you can draw. There's comfort zone art and there's like new art, experimental stuff, stuff you've never drawn before. And it's really great to do both. Um, I think I do more comfort zone stuff because I just, I've expanded my library of things I like to draw so much that I think I have a lot of comfort zone stuff. And I think this includes like animals, frogs, plants, Things that are easy to draw that you know you can do, you can like replicate it over and over. And new things will be like, maybe I'll decide I want to draw some people and some clothes and some portraits because I don't draw them as much as I used to and I want to make sure I can still draw them. Sometimes I'll randomly draw like cars. It doesn't happen a lot, but I don't really draw cars ever. I don't really have a reason to. It's just not really part of my art, but sometimes I'm like, let's let's just draw some cards and it ends up being a interesting page in my sketchbook because it's not something that I normally do or something that I'm used to seeing from myself. So it's good to explore new things and to draw the comfort zone things because if you're always pushing yourself and always trying to draw new things and it tires you out, that's not always going to be fun. You want to, at the end of the day, enjoy yourself and make art that you like. Some people really enjoy pushing themselves and always learning new things and always like drawing new things and challenging yourself. And some people really like drawing the things that they know and trying to perfect that instead. So it really just depends on what your goals are, but just some food for thought. Try to draw some things you've never drawn and don't be afraid to draw things that you've already drawn. I think as artists, we tell ourselves like, Everything you do has to be unique. No one could have done it before. It has to be amazing. It has to be like a brand new idea, but this just isn't true. Um, everything has been done before, basically. You just have to do your version of it. I hope this video was a nice little pep talk for your sketchbook. I did a post on that new social media app, Threads. <laughs> we'll see if I keep using it, but I did a post asking people what their goals are for their sketchbooks. And I think I might do a video about that too. Um, but it just got me thinking about sketchbooks and how everyone has their own goals for it. And, and artists seem to, it seems like such a personal thing to each artist. Everyone uses it differently. And that's what fascinates me about them. So I wanted to give you some tips on how you can maybe improve your sketchbook if you're feeling a little bit bland with it. If you're not feeling very good about your sketchbook, these are some things that might help you feel better about it. And in the end, there's no like good or bad sketchbooks. Every sketchbook has its purpose. And the whole purpose of it is to draw and to discover new things. And as long as you're doing that, you're not doing anything wrong. So I really hope you enjoyed this video and you enjoyed the cute little bug sketches and I'll see you at my next one. Bye.